you go back pretty far back. Uh, but, uh, it, officially, you were in the cabinet of uh, President Cory, but was that the first time your paths crossed? Or? Uh, no, that wasn't the first time. In fact, uh, before that, I, I, I knew the, then the uh, chief of staff, mm -hmm. uh, Fidel Ramos, uh, on, a, on a personal basis because my first wife was the lawyer, was the lawyer of the daughter of, uh, of President Ramos. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the case. This was in the, in the 70s mm -hmm. or early 80s. But uh, indeed, uh, my first wife was the lawyer of the daughter of President Ramos, and therefore I knew him uh, even before mm -hmm. uh, I joined the cabinet in 1986. Mm -hmm. But there weren't really any interactions, close interactions during that period? No close interaction because it was more of a professional relationship with uh, uh, with my wife mm -hmm. as the lawyer of, of, of the daughter of President Ramos. Okay, uh, so let's get back, Le let's go to where <clears throat> there were interactions, regular interactions already. Uh, you were both in the cabinet of uh, Mrs. Aquino. That's right, uh, <clears throat> I was the uh, Secretary of Labor and mm -hmm. he was the uh, uh, Defense Secretary. Mm -hmm. And at that time it was a tumultuous um, period mm -hmm. of uh, the industrial relations. Very unstable, uh, but the, I was glad that uh, Eddie was there because he provided a steady hand uh, in so far as the armed forces and the police uh, were concerned uh, and made sure that uh, the uh, very difficult relations between the armed services and the labor unions were not repeated uh, after uh, when when we were together in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it was uh, uh, then Secretary Ramos who issued the uh, the uh, memorandum order, which uh, uh, required uh, the uh, police forces to stay 15 meters away from any picket lines. Ah. to avoid uh, any untoward incident mm -hmm. uh, on the picket line. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that helped a lot in uh, maintaining uh, stability, uh, uh, promoting uh, confidence uh, between uh, the government and, uh, the, uh, and the labor unions. Uh, and, uh, and so it was on that basis that I had worked closely with uh, mm -hmm. then Secretary Ramos mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the cabinet. He was uh, in the uh, uh, peace and order sector mm -hmm. of governance, and I was on the uh, social uh, services sector, meaning the labor union. So mm -hmm. there was a natural friction uh, between the oh, two yeah. groups, oh. but uh, it, it, but with steady hand of uh, steady eddy, we were able to uh, 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 minimize uh, uh, conflicts uh, between the two competing interests. Mm -hmm. You, you mentioned uh, the moniker, uh, Steady Eddie. Uh, mm. uh, that one, I guess, was coined what, at the height of the, depending on who it is you're speaking with, five, seven, or nine coup attempts <laughs> against, <laughs> yes, uh, against yeah. uh, Mrs. Aquino. Right. I mean, uh, your impressions of how he handled himself <laughs> through, through those, those well, uh, incidents? Uh, he indeed earned the moniker Steady Eddie because uh, no, all of us were tense, uh, uh, not having been exposed to this kind of uh, environment. But but uh, Edith uh, was uh, was steady in his uh, adherence to the constitutional principles, uh, to the civilian rule, and therefore that made uh, uh, handling the situation on the part of President Aquino much simpler, uh, because he had uh, in Ed Ramos somebody who. Uh, who felt that uh, we cannot uh, support any uh, attempt to change the form of government through a coup d'etat. What was your impressions of uh, FDR as a cabinet member, as a cabinet colleague? Uh, what was he like as a team player? <laughs> well, you know, it was during FDR's time that uh, the phrase uh, CSW was uh, was uh, the, 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 the key uh, phrase in any government work. 
meaning complete staff support. When you give him a memo, the first question he ask, question he has is, is uh, have you vetted the uh, the recommendations? Have you consulted uh, the people concerned? Have you done your research? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he said also in that sense, uh, uh, he he made sure that uh, you can defend your position, and uh, <coughs> he is one of the few people who I know who works in his car. Uh, you know. He would, <laughs> after uh, office hours in uh, Malacanang, he would go home to Arlegi. Mm -hmm. You look for him, you will not find him because he's in the car uh, signing his papers and reviewing uh, the, the memos to him to make sure that there is complete staff work. Literally mobile office. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, he had a mobile office. <laughs> Share with us your recall of his... You know, your, your first memory that he was preparing for something higher. I well, mean, I, I believe you know, military... Toby, I was, the, I was the executive secretary of uh, President Corey. And, uh, you know, um, at that time, the uh, other candidate was uh, the late Monsing Mitra, speaker. who had a lot of friends in the cabinet. And... Uh, uh, when uh, uh, President Corey decided that uh, she would support uh, Secretary Ramos, uh, I, I was the only cabinet member uh, who, who, who was called upon to actively assist uh, uh, President Corey. Uh, we had only one governor out of the, whatever, uh, 70 uh, provinces at that time. Uh, and, but, uh, you know, uh, Secretary Ramos, or President Ramos, is one who loved challenges, and therefore, kahit ko, kahit dadalawa lang kami, buong punta sa mga rari, sige pa rin, sugod pa rin. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, I, I saw uh, in uh, President Ramos' determination that uh, indeed uh, he had the capacity to lead the country at the time when uh, things were not that stable. Uh, remember that he was the uh, 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 the candidate in the first election after martial law, mm -hmm. and it was very critical that uh, uh, people would believe that uh, power can be peacefully transferred, and it was uh, uh, good that the president won the election. Not only was he prepared, but uh, uh, the the people saw in him a uh, believer in the constitution, and therefore. Uh, there was a very a, a, a smooth transition of, uh, uh, of power between President Corey and President Ramos. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Aquino asked you to help out, but were you convinced that he was the right man? Uh, yes, I was convinced that he was the right man. Uh, he was prepared. Uh, he, he uh, l let's say that he uh, um, has, uh, uh, what do you call it? Paid his dues. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he staked his uh, career for for uh, the democratic government, mm -hmm. uh, and I I I, I see uh, no one who who was better prepared than Secretary Ramos at that time. Mm -hmm. How crucial was Mrs. Aquino's endorsement? Sorry? How crucial was Mrs. Aquino's endorsement? Very crucial. Endorsement? Very crucial. There were a number of candidates then. And uh, uh, I, I think President Ramos had, if I recall correctly, and uh, I, I, can, I, I hope that uh, I was I, 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 I'm correct. My recollection is that he had less than 30% of, uh, the, uh, of the votes cast. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it was very crucial that... Uh, uh, the uh, that uh, uh, the the uh, power given to the to President Trump was then uh, would be utilized uh, principally to protect our democratic system of government. And uh, President Trump was uh, best qualified and personified the stability that we needed at that time. Mm -hmm. Did he have the vision to move forward? S did, did you, he have the vision? Did you to, see that? Yes, certainly he had mm -hmm. the vision to move forward. Having been uh, exposed to governance, having been exposed to uh, uh, the uh, uh, 
erroneous uh, decisions during the Marcos regime. Uh, he uh, he was he had the vision uh, for a for a better Philippines. Uh, of course, that vision had nothing to do with his fake eyeglasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see through. Yes, see through. Yes. <laughs> He was initially seen as very stiff, dry, colorless. I mean, you know, the, the military type yeah. cast. I mean, yes. how did you guys help re-engineer that image? We, we didn't have to re-engineer. Uh, he's, he's stiff. Uh, and that was, to me, that was a good trait because Filipinos are hard to govern. Okay. And therefore, you needed somebody who was a disciplinarian. Uh, who, who probably uh, who had his roots in a dis in in, in the uh, uh, in, in the military, uh, where discipline is uh, the most important element, and he carried that as a civilian president. And uh, I, I I did not see anything that should that, that should should that that uh, should change that. Uh, he was the president, and uh, uh, the style of being stiff is something that uh, was needed at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He won. He won, yes. <laughs> were you expecting to join, or were you looking forward to going back to private practice? Uh, no, I, uh, I'll be candid. Uh, one of the things, you know, I was the only cabinet member who was... Uh, who was assisting uh, actively uh, President Corey at the time. And uh, it became a natural flow from being an executive secretary uh, of the Corey administration to join uh, the Ramos cabinet. Uh, initially, uh, uh, there was discussion between uh, uh, me and uh, the President uh, Ramos that um, uh, I, I uh, could be his uh, executive secretary, Same. Mm -hmm. but uh, having worked uh, in that post during the time of uh, Corey, I had thought that uh, it would be best if uh, President Ramos would get somebody who he had worked with, uh, particularly uh, in his previous post in government, mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, being an executive secretary requires the full uh, confidence of the president and somebody who has worked with him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that qualification mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, on a personal basis, and mm -hmm. therefore I, I moved to the secretary, to the moved back as secretary of justice. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm glad that I did because we worked together very well uh, with the president. Uh, in fact, uh, Initially, he wanted me to become Secretary of uh, uh, Interior and Local Governments with uh, René de Villa as a Secretary of National Defense. National Defense. Oh. I, uh, I oh, declined man. that mm -hmm. and I said I, better, I, I want to go back to my old post as Secretary of Justice. I feel I can be more effective there. So, yes, indeed, he wa wanted me to, to initially become the DILG secretary. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, no. yeah, I remember that. <laughs> You're posting at the uh, DOJ, uh, quite a colorful posting as well. Uh, <laughs> let me recall a few uh, the challenges. No? They, they, they were pretty challenging. Kurateong <laughs> Baleleng, if you remember, the Red Scorpion group, particularly yeah. targeting Filipino Chinese. Yeah, it, yeah. It, uh, kidnapping yes. became a cottage industry, if you yeah. remember. And then the Houtman, Biscon, yeah. the murder cases. Uh, yes, yeah. that's correct, Toby. I, uh, it was a very uh, uh, eventful stint that I had. <laughs> and uh, first, to me, it was critical that we restore the faith of our people in our rule of law, mm -hmm. that we maintain their, uh, their belief in the rule of law in order that we can strengthen our democracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can only do that if people perceive uh, the, uh, that there is an equal application of the law, and that was my role as a Secretary of Justice to make sure that 
people believe that we are all equal under the law mm -hmm. as a, 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 a democracy. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I had to take very firm positions on cases regardless of who was involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially in sensational cases, which invited media attention, mm -hmm. uh, I made sure that uh, we handled it properly and uh, to, to impress on the people that the system of justice was working. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's the only way that democracy can be strengthened when people believe that uh, we have a rule of law as the uh, principal basis for our governance. Mm -hmm. Was that part of the mandate? I generally ask the cabinet appointees of FBR, what were the directions or the, the, the uh, instructions on how to perform the mandate of the particular department? Yes, in this, in this particular uh, case, uh, uh, President Ramos being in the law and order sector of uh, governance, it was natural that uh, uh, he would, that he would uh, pursue a policy that uh, the rule of law should be the basis of our day-to-day uh, uh, -day, uh, uh, governance of the, uh, of the cabinet post where we are assigned. Um, so, yes, uh, that was a very clear uh, instruction of uh, President Ramos. How did it feel that he had your back? Well, it, you, you are very comfortable that uh, uh, indeed he will not interfere with your work. And he never interfered in my work. Uh -huh. He never told me to do this or that. Uh -huh. uh, he just told me to make sure that, uh, uh, that the people uh, would, uh, well, that we could restore the people, f people's faith in the rule of law as uh, the bedrock of our governance. Uh -huh. a, few, a few other assignments. Uh, the continued search for ill-gotten wealth. And then your... No, I was not involved in the ill-gotten wealth because that was the PCGG. PCGG. So, mm -hmm. And the PCGG was not under the jurisdiction of the Department of Justice. It was under... Uh, it was working directly with the Solicitor General, mm -hmm. which, was, <coughs> which was an independent agency yeah. uh, of the DOJ. So, I had no opportunity to work uh, oh, on that. the PCG okay. uh, on the mm -hmm. PCGG cases. Mm -hmm. What about the peace negotiations yeah. with the three main threat groups? Uh, yes, Ram, I, CPP, asked, uh, yeah. I was uh, the president asked me to be act to to uh, uh, take an active hand in the peace negotiations with uh, the CPP, NPA, mm -hmm. and NDF. And it is in that, in that uh, um, role that I had a lot of meetings with uh, the NDF in, <laughs> in Utrecht. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, Toby, you know, decades after, I hear the same <laughs> demands from the <laughs> NDF when I mm -hmm. was there in the early 1990s. Mm -hmm. So there's been no change. And I knew it will be extremely difficult given... Uh, the position of the NDF, mm -hmm. that they want to be part of governance even if they were not elected mm -hmm. uh, representatives. They wanted to exercise a part of the sovereign power of government, which was simply unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And then in, uh, it is unacceptable today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, well, two out of three. Uh, CPP and PA is still an ongoing process, but the yeah. MNLF, no? And, and, well, and not RAM. only that, mm -hmm. the RAM. Mm -hmm. Yes, the we, I was part of the uh, group together with the late Heidi Yorak, mm -hmm. uh, who, who crafted the amnesty uh, proposal for the RAM to return back uh, to default. Mm -hmm. uh, and remember, uh, in 19... I think it was uh, 1991 or 92 when my house was bombed yes. <laughs> during those unstable periods. So, mm -hmm. but uh, that's I have gone through a, a number of uh, episodes, and uh, while we are at it, uh, I do recall that there were very, uh, very some very tense moments uh, uh, when I was uh, Secretary of Justice. If you recall, there was that 
Colonel de Guzman mm -hmm. uh, assassination mm -hmm. in uh, Magallanes. Yeah, uh, yeah. And <laughs> Colonel de Guzman, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> sorry, uh, there, there was that very uh, significant, or there was that episode uh, on the drug. Uh, yes. uh, it was a bust or something. Uh, problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, where a, uh, a Colonel de Guzman mm -hmm. was shot uh, by the NBI operatives in Magallanes. Right. And, and, uh, second, and Colonel de Guzman was uh, identified to be part of that uh, uh, PMA class, which was associated with then Secretary Ramos. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, it was the NBI who operated against Colonel de Guzman mm -hmm. and resulting in his unfortunate death. Uh, those were one of the very tense moments that I went through. Mm -hmm. As Secretary of Justice, uh, Edward, uh, Secretary Ramos then, as Secretary of National Defense. Mm -hmm. But what was he like now? As a, Now he was Chief Executive, uh, whereas a few years uh, before that you were As, a, as I said earlier, Toby, uh, famous <laughs> instruction, CSW. And during the cabinet meetings, you better uh, make sure that when you report on any matter, uh, you have done the complete staff work, mm -hmm. because he will go into details and he will he will he will conclude that you did not do the staff work, or you could not respond to his very searching questions when you present something in the cabinet. And um, uh, he stood. Uh, uh, he, he was one who was. Who, was uh, willing to stand his on his principles. Um, I do remember that uh, you know there was uh, there was this uh, uh, Ledak or legislative yeah. executive uh, of the development council, the council yeah. where the senators would try to assert uh, their views uh, in the cabinet in the meetings and. And President Trump was just put them down and say, no, this is, I'm running the uh, government as president, this is my policy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and so he's, and I, I saw him as a very strong leader, stood his ground in many of these instances. Mm -hmm. yep, you mentioned Ledak, and I was actually going to get to that uh, eventually. But there we are. Uh, that was, that was a governance tool that he used, you know, uh, brought in all stakeholders, uh, legislative, executive, even uh, private sector and yeah. civil groups or, or whoever had a stake in it. He, he as President Ramos said that uh, uh, having, having, having uh, uh, earned his spurs uh, in the military organization, um, he has that natural, uh, natural ability to b bring in together people who are uh, concerned on uh, any particular issue and try to get the consensus as to uh, on which direction to take. Uh, in that sense, he had an inclusive uh, gov government wherein everybody felt uh, was part of the government, even if uh, even with his military background, he was able to integrate uh, uh, into his government uh, various sectors of society, as uh, the civil society, uh, uh, the, the uh, various political parties, uh, uh, and, and uh, the, that is a quality of leadership which is not easy to develop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even anyway. Even critics, I mean, we yes. were surprised yes. uh, that we would see some mm -hmm. of his most vocal critics attending, that's, coming to a Ledak. That's right. So, because uh, uh, he is the president not only of uh, uh, Lakas, which was the political party that he formed, but he's the president of the people and he made sure that uh, uh, he listens to the to the governed, mm -hmm. not only to his political party. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the work ethic and the management style. He started very early. <laughs> he started his days very early, and he ended his days very late. Uh, how, did, said, how did he, you cope? <laughs> he, is a, he is a 
a workaholic. He really loves to work. And, uh, and uh, don't think that he has nothing in between his official meetings because in between that he would call people to his study room and uh, chewing a cigar and something and uh, <laughs> with a basketball NBA game on the side. He would give instructions. So he was really a workaholic. Multitasker. <laughs> okay. Um, give me your give me your recall of uh, out of town cabinet meetings, hmm? and then out of town uh, cabinet meetings. He 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 would, if you remember, he would hold uh, cabinet meetings in different provinces, and where were you? I have I have very little recollection oh, okay. of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times uh, <laughs> we had. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, but that mm -hmm. was not. I, I could hardly recall. All right. okay. uh, Did he assign but, you? But uh, maybe uh, we can. You know, I I I, uh, he, I respect him so much, uh, Toby, that uh, uh, when I got married the second time, I got him as. Uh, <laughs> My godfather, <laughs> together with President Corey. <laughs> so I had only two wedding sponsors when I married my present wife, mm -hmm. uh, President Ramos and President Corey. And, oh my uh, gosh. Ni <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> So uh, to some people listening, I may no longer be credible insofar as my statements on the president is concerned because uh, I am a biased uh, <laughs> witness to the Ramos history, mm -hmm. he being my godfather. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you had two of the <laughs> Mrs. Aquino and uh, FVR. Okay. Um, a few of his uh, policies. Foreign relations. We threw out the basis. Our relationship with the U.S. was iffy. He put us back on the map with ASEAN and eventually they say our coming out party was the apex of yeah. 96. Tell me about foreign, how he used foreign relations as a tool for, for his governance. Of the record, Indico, Indico Masado. Okay. All right. Oh, of his, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that happened after I left the cabinet there. Many of these, uh, uh, Initiatives like the APEC and all. Ningari mm -hmm. was cabinet. Ah, you were already uh, you in, were the so in the Senate. Okay, so let me get to it. Uh, you ran under Lakas. the Lakas yeah. Laban uh, coalition, coalition you know, 95. 1995. Yes. Right. Did you need convincing? I mean, <laughs> join, joining uh, uh, no, the turbulent no, world no. of. <laughs> I really had my sights. Uh, okay. Uh, on uh, on getting into an elective office, I was in the cabinet for nine years, and I thought that I prepared myself uh, enough uh, to learn about policies of government, mm -hmm. which is principally what a legislator would do. Mm -hmm. A senator or a congressman would be a policy baker. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, uh, and not one who. <laughs> Looks at a pork barrel. It's so uh, so. So uh, as I, 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 he, I, I did all, uh, aspire to become a senator. Uh, and in 1995, I left the cabinet as cabinet sec as uh, secretary of justice to join the uh, to, and threw my hat in the political ring as a candidate for senate. <laughs> Uh, that was also, there was also some political savvy there, no? Uh, he, he only had two Lakas senators, right? Uh, Santanina Rasul and Flavier. Leti Shahani. And then he ah. got into the Lakas Laban coalition because he needed, if you remember? Yes, that's, that's correct. Uh, although I must confess, uh, afterwards we sort of had different paths on the, on the political uh, trail because uh, I sided, I, I did not uh, support the uh, change of leadership uh, in, the, in, in that Congress when 
uh, Sandra Angara was deposed as Senate President. Mm -hmm. I supported I supported him and Bill and ended up in the minority at that time. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, uh, you know, uh, the the uh, uh, Senate was restructured, and even when we were in the uh, not with the administration, we supported many of the initiatives of the uh, Ramos administration. Then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me what you focused on and how that dovetailed with his own Philippines 2000. It, I, I, you know, as a lawyer mm -hmm. uh, and having come from the secretary from the post as criminal justice as a, as a, as a, uh, a secretary of labor, uh, we had a number of measures uh, and I supported a number of measures uh, designed to strengthen. Uh, our justice system, uh, uh, the prosecution, the uh, judges, uh, the police, uh, etc. Um, and it is in that regard that I, I felt that I could contribute most uh, given my background and experience as Secretary of Justice and also uh, to strengthen and balance our uh, labor laws because I was uh, Secretary of Labor. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, though, we, up to now, when it comes to labor legislation, uh, my colleagues would look at me and say, yeah. how does this uh, fit in our system today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yung Sano, uh, he also, he had this catchphrase, if you remember, economic liberalization and global competitiveness. No, he wanted to level the playing field. Yes, uh, the yes as, a, as a policy, he wanted uh, a, a liberalized uh, economy. And there were, uh, we supported a number of measures along that line, uh, uh, including opening up our, our Telephone system, our uh, 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 power industry, mm -hmm. uh, to allow other players to come in, uh, and that was the uh, cornerstone of the economic policy of President Trump's uh, mm -hmm. liberalization of, of, of the very otherwise very restrictive uh, policies uh, uh, that uh, was then existing when he came in, mm -hmm. and he brought along. Uh, he brought the economy back into the global mainstream. If you remember WTO GATT, the Yes. Uh, the the Yes, he, uh, he, he exercised leadership uh, in order to lead the country into an era of uh, liberalization. Okay. Did he have enough time to do everything he set out to do? Sorry? Did he have enough time? Uh, yeah. It was a six-year term. Well, that, uh, he, he had to do it uh, within the, uh, within the cor four corners of the Constitution, within the six-year six -year limitation. There was no other choice. He, he was, uh, he was uh, an exponent of uh, the constitutional democracy, constitutional system of government, and therefore he had to work within that system. And even when he, uh, and, and he, he uh, tried to amend the Constitution in order to liberalize the very uh, constrictive provisions, but unfortunately he didn't have the time. Mm -hmm. It ran out. Where were you with, if you remember, Pirma? I was against the, it. Uh, I was. I, you know, I, I, I believe that if we are to amend the Constitution, it must be through a... Uh, Constitutional Convention. Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, the Constitution is a very complex document. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a PIRMA which would uh, uh, introduce amendments uh, upon uh, the initiative of a certain percentage of voters, to me, uh, would not allow a very uh, serious debate and an in-depth study of the Constitution. So I was not in favor of amending it through of the through a system of people's initiative or what you call PIRMA. <laughs> Mrs. Aquino and Cardinal Sin, if you remember, stepped in and 
I guess that eventually convinced him. Well, yes, I, 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 uh, I, I recall that uh, that uh, President Aquino and uh, Cardinal Sin took the position that it is not uh, um, um, uh, a correct policy to amend the Constitution through a people's initiative. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, the need for a more deliberate body was uh, the position taken by our two leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's democracy. You, <laughs> you present your own ideas uh, to the people and uh, uh, the, uh, the views of Corey and Cardinal uh, were the ones that prevailed mm -hmm. uh, support the public opinion. Hindi ba kayo nag-uusap nun? I would consult you and... I mean, I you were already in the legislative, no? <laughs> I was already in, yes, I was already in the Senate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, your party affiliation was lakas, but uh, <laughs> quite a few of the FBR's inner circle said you were tighter with Senator Angada. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, uh, and that was a natural flow. We were, we were uh, Ed and I, uh, the day that Angada was, uh, and I were worked together for years or decades before mm. we both joined the government. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, friendship uh, 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 was, uh, was uh, in so far as we were concerned, there's a bond of friendship between us having worked together. And uh, um, uh, it couldn't, it, uh, it cost therefore as us, uh, my, of uh, uh, falling away from uh, the strict uh, political coalition that Lakas had. One of the other observations from FPR's time was that he appointed a lot of uh, former subordinates in the military into uh, key government posts. Mm -hmm. He militarized the <laughs> bureaucracy. How? how well, uh, how do you take to that? To me, that is a natural progression. He was in the military. He knew the people well, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, don't, I didn't take it against him uh, uh, that uh, he, uh, that former uh, military officials uh, were appointed to this civilian post. Um, and, and proof is that he was able to, President Ramos was able to maintain civilian government and civilian supremacy even if there were former military pers uh, officials, okay. retired military men in civilian post. Uh, because after, uh, but because it's so far as uh, these appointments are concerned, uh, these are uh, matters which requires the confidence of the appointed mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. And as I said, uh, it was natural for him to appoint the people he knew mm -hmm. uh, rather than uh, some, some other people. Remember that he is the one who would face the electorate and the people. Mm -hmm. And therefore, these are the decisions that uh, he had to make. And uh, I, 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 I I, I, we, we must accord him mm -hmm. with the leeway and the respect that he is entitled to as the elected president of the Republic. Okay. So, Share with us the <laughs> internal politics of La Casa as it prepared for 98 uh, elections. I was, <coughs> <coughs> I was not familiar, I was not part of that. Who may wala ka na? Hindi ako kasama doon sila yung panahon na yun. Well, nahati actually, ano? Joe Divi, Divilla. All right, all right, okay. Transition to Vice President Joseph Estrada handed over, FBR handed over uh, power to him in 98. Um, but if you remember, that was a pretty turbulent period as well in our politics. Uh, it was also a turbulent period in our politics. Uh, yeah. well, well, President Estrada. Not turbulent. <laughs> Not in the same sense. 
<laughs> as uh, it was in the uh, early 90s, mm -hmm. in the, when when uh, there was a lot of uh, efforts to take over on the part of of, of the RAM. Mm -hmm. um, so so it, the the the, turbul the there was political turbulence in 1998 of a different context. It was an or it was a political. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, campaign. It was a political contest, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was consistent with our system of government that uh, there is a contest uh, for uh, for the <coughs> electoral in, in the electoral process, and mm -hmm. that is natural. Mm -hmm. I don't think that w what is important that we were able to survive the tension mm -hmm. that was caused by the political uh, campaign. Well, what what I what I meant actually is a few years after uh, Joseph Estrada's impeachment process and eventual withdrawal, uh, PGMA's succession into uh, well, uh, the, the success the succession. He, how did how did you see his role? Uh, he transition from. Chief Executive to Citizen Eddie. Did you see him? He came out a few times, no? Uh, uh, well, he maintained the, the, the senior statesman yeah. uh, posture at that uh, point. And uh, he, uh, he, I, I, I saw him uh, not as a partisan participant mm -hmm. in the process of change uh, through the people power uh, 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 <laughs> episode, <laughs> uh, I I I I, uh, I I perceive him to be one again who was trying to provide a steady hand on what otherwise was a turbulent uh, period in our political history. Mm -hmm. So steady, Eddie, but I tried to mm -hmm. be. <laughs> Vice President Gloria Arroyo succeeded. She ran for her own term in 2004. Allegations of uh, election fraud or tampering. Mm -hmm. uh, but he came out uh, openly supporting uh, Mrs. Arroyo. Yes, oh, yes. Uh he, he, in, in his you own were you were on the opposite side, right? <laughs> of, of no, I was the Senate president at the time. Right, and, right. And uh, uh, we, as Senate president, I was part of the National Canvassing Board, which uh, uh, proclaimed uh, 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 president. president Arroyo. Mm -hmm. And I do recall at the time again there was a lot of political tension because of the allegations of, of cheating and of fraud, uh, there was a very distinct possibility that uh, the proclamation could be uh, suspended beyond the June 30 deadline. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I may, I, I, on my own, on my own, and uh, on the, uh, the, we, I, I worked so that the proclamation uh, is done before June 30, and in fact, it was done just about a week before the expiration of the term <laughs> of, uh, of, uh, of president of, of what's that? Uh, oh yeah, before the end of the term of, the, of uh, June 30 of the president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, I was I was a senate president, and I thought that uh, I owe it to the people that there must be a uh, a duly elected government yeah. in place mm -hmm. uh, on, 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 on July, on, on June 30, mm -hmm. on July 1. You do meet with him occasionally these days? How, how only, you, how? On, I meet with him, but on, only on social gatherings. Okay. How, so how, how have you kept... Well, the uh, same, uh, <laughs> uh, the same uh, person who I knew who was fond of uh, cracking jokes, mm -hmm. uh, he would he was, uh, he would uh, always uh, uh, show his uh, transparent eyeglasses and all. 
uh, but uh, I, I haven't had any serious uh, in, uh, discussion with him mm -hmm. for the last several years. Mm -hmm. I've been busy uh, also myself. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> what do you want people to remember of FDR as president, as a public servant? Well, I would like the people to remember that if we continue to uh, have a system of government under a uh, democracy, a large part of that is because uh, the President Ramos adhered to the constitutional system of government, never believed in uh, 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 extra uh, constitutional means of, of, of um, change in government and uh, um, he uh, and, and the uh, his adherence uh, to the constitutional precepts and uh, system of government that certainly has resulted in the political stability that we enjoy today. Is there an FBR legacy that you know the country can look on as a guide for moving that forward? That is the legacy. His adherence to the uh, constitutional system of governance. I'm good. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>